All right, the Fox is back online for another spring-themed video, this time about foraging. Foraging has a lot to do with being cunning and resourceful, and that's because the money from forage is okay. I'd consider it supplemental at best, but its real power comes from completing community center bundles, from giving gifts to villagers, and also from eating certain ones for a surprising amount of energy to keep other tasks going throughout the day. Now, I know a lot of you guys hunger for money, and if you haven't seen my spring-themed guide on the best and worst crops, then look up top where I'm linking a card to that video, and it'll straighten you out for making money in spring. Anyways, there's actually a lot of information on foraging, so I don't want to waste any more time. The video is going to be broken into four sections because I've categorized the forage into beach forage, normal everyday forage, special condition forage, and desert forage. Let's get started immediately with... All right, to make this easier, I've created these little charts that'll serve as visual aids because just... Hearing about all this information can be overwhelming. So as you can see from the spring beach forageable items, we've got in descending order of value, sea urchin, coral, clam, cockle, oyster, and mussel. And you should be able to tell very quickly by looking at this chart that they have a lot to do with community center bundles. And to be honest, that's their main function. The main thing to know about the beach is that it's divided into two sections of forage, and the section on the right is inaccessible until you repair that little wooden bridge that needs 300 pieces of wood to repair, and then you'll be able to access the tidal pools. The tidal pools have the sea urchins, and typically that's where you're also going to find the coral, which are the two higher gold value items. The only other bit of cunning here is with the clam, because it is a universally neutral gift, meaning no one's going to like it, love it, dislike it, or hate it. They're just going to be okay with it, which is plus 20 friendship. Now, I can already imagine your faces, this kind of really Fox plus 20 friendship, big freaking deal. So cunning. But hear me out for a second. Sometimes you're going to get ambushed by somebody's birthday and you don't have a decent gift prepared. You can give them a clam because on their birthday, you get a times eight friendship bonus and 20 times eight is still 160 friendship, which is equivalent to two loved gifts. Oh, pretty cunning, huh? The only exception to this is Evelyn, who actually hates clams. But you can give this to everyone else for a guaranteed plus 20 friendship. Anyways, let's move on. Normal, ordinary, general forage. This is the stuff that most people are going to think of when you're talking about forage. But along the way, you'll probably notice me using my hoe to dig up various earthworms. This is another form of forage that primarily gets you assorted building materials, but the most important thing are artifacts for the museum. So make sure you carry your hoe with you whenever you go foraging. With our nice chart handy, our normal spring forage in descending order of value is the leek, wild horseradish, dandelion, and daffodil. And you'll quickly notice that the sell price of these is, it's okay, it's supplemental, but it's not outstanding. And you'll see that all four of them are used in the Spring Forage Bundle, and that's actually what completes the Spring Forage Bundle. There's a few unique things about these, and the first is that you can actually plant these as seeds. The Spring Forage Bundle will give you wild spring seeds, which you can plant, and they will grow randomly into these four different crops. When you harvest the forage that grew from these seeds, you will not get farming EXP. Instead, you'll actually get foraging EXP. So that's another way to level up foraging. In addition to that, you can take one of each of these forage items and convert them into 10 wild seeds. So there's a bit of a synergy there. Now, there are a whole bunch of miscellaneous uses for the normal forage, and I don't want you to get lost in the details. So here are the most important things to know about them. The first one is that the wild horseradish is one of Krobus's favorite gifts. He's the shadow dude down in the sewers, which you can access by giving 60 artifacts to the museum. And that the leek is one of the only two things that George loves, the other one being fried mushrooms. 
And remember, you can plant the wild seeds to grow more if you want a more aggressive supply of these as gifts. So what makes this group of forage so special? The answer is that they're either slightly restricted in their availability, or they just have a kind of a weird quirk about them. Once again, going in descending value, we've got the moral, common mushrooms, spring onion, and salmonberry, and you're going to notice a few things right off the bat. One is that there is quite a price gap between them, and also that we've got, what, fall forage bundle options in spring? Yep, that's what makes these guys special. Anyways, let's start with the moral and the common mushroom. Both of these are used in two separate bundles, exotic and fall forage. But the thing that makes them so special is that they are both found in the secret woods, which is not immediately accessible. You'll need a steel axe to get through it. In addition to that, the secret woods is the location of a star drop, which is an extremely valuable item. And if you want to know how to get it, I actually made a guide about Old Master Cannoli, which I'm going to link as a card up top. In order to get to the secret woods, you're going to need to go south of your farm into the cinder sap forest and then head due west. If you keep following the regional wall, you will run into the fallen log that you can't get through without the steel axe. In addition to their use as bundle items, the moral is one of the items needed to make a life elixir, which is a pretty good healing item, and then the common mushroom and the moral together are used to make fried mushrooms, which is the other favorite gift of George, which actually makes spring a good time to get your friendship up with George, as both of his favorite items are available in spring. All right, let's talk about the spring onion next. What makes it special is that it doesn't really have a specific function. And on top of that, it specifically grows in the southeast section of the cinder sap forest near the sewers and nowhere else. The spring onion is another example of using cunning and resourcefulness in foraging because if you recall from the chart, they're only worth eight gold. And if you were to eat them, you'd only get 13 energy. And since they're not used in any bundles, what good are they? And the answer is as gifts. Harvey, Leah, and Linus like them, and a liked gift is plus 40 friendship. And because you get so many spring onions, it will give you a decent supply of pretty average quality gifts for these characters. And let me tell you, if you don't have any gifts for a character, then this is a great way to get the friendship building up until you get superior quality gifts. The final special condition forage is salmonberry, and what makes it special is that it specifically grows in bushes and in a limited time window in spring on the 15th through the 18th. Salmonberries aren't worth anything, they're only worth 5 gold each, but they are 25 energy each, and they are extremely plentiful if you spend time gathering them, so they're actually a fantastic source of energy, which is outstanding in the early game. You'll be able to mine more and chop more wood pretty aggressively as long as you have a supply of salmon berries. But that's going to take us into our final section. Forging in the desert is pretty much the same as foraging anywhere else. Except the only way to get to the desert is if you complete the vault bundle. This gets the bus back up and running, and then you can pay 500 gold to get a ticket to the Calico Desert. Completing the vault bundle is purely an issue of money, and it's going to set you back a grand total of 42,500 gold. But once you complete that, you'll have access to the desert and coconuts and cactus fruit both of which are used in the Exotic Forage Bundle and have a decent sell price. However, they have a much better value than that. Both of these items have awesome gifting potential because the cactus fruit is Linus, Pam, and Sam's favorite gift, while the coconut is Haley and Linus's favorite gift. So major friendship potential in the desert. And now, you know about foraging in the spring. If this video made you feel even a little bit more cunning or resourceful, smash that like button and subscribe for more weekly Stardew Valley videos because you don't have to be good to get good. <laughs>